is. It's so delightful to be with you and to be able to talk with you. Hattie is an artist, and from what I understand, she has had an interest in art from way years ago. So, but listen, Hattie has done a number of wonderful pieces at this point, but it didn't start out this way. Tell us a little bit about your beginning life. I understand you had some illness early on. Uh, at the age of three, I was diagnosed with polio. And uh, I was paralyzed from my neck down. And uh, I was uh, not able to do anything for myself. So my mom had to do everything. Like uh, I was treated like a baby all over again, an infant, because I had no use of my hands. And um, the only way um, um, I would eat was to wait for my dad to come home because he hadn't really spoiled right ah. So anyway, um, later on, um, early on rather, my mom was pregnant again and she got pregnant and uh, uh, an aunt in Mississippi uh, Ask her to let her keep me to help her out since she had to, you know, expecting the baby. So I went down there and I lived with her for several months. And uh, so, what was the benefit of your living with your aunt? Um, she was able to take care of me to give my mom a break from having to care for me as a baby. Because, you know, when you're pregnant, you're going to have some days you're tired and, you know, all the preparation thing to go into uh, being pregnant. So uh, she was kind enough to take me to help my mom out because she had uh, three other kids. Yeah, so at what point uh, were you able to or delivered from, healed from the polio? You said it happened when you were three. Mm -hmm. So at what point did you come back to the use of your body? Um, the doctors uh, were, we were, my mom was reported to the doctors about me being sick, so they had the uh, doctors to come out to examine me, but my mom wouldn't let them in. So what she did, she uh, just refused to let them in, so they brought a police escort out. And when the police escort got there, well, the doctor was able to come in, and that's how uh, my mom found out I had polio. So we were quarantined, the house was quarantined for the quarantine a lot of time, and daddy was the only one able to go to work. So uh, daddy's supervisor found out that I was sick. So what he did was, uh, daddy was working for IC Railroad as a cook, and um, what his supervisor did, he gave Daddy a train seat, just the bottom portion of the train seat. And I remember it so well. It was, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was green velvet. And they would take this seat, and well, Daddy took the seat and placed it on the altar at church. And that's where I spent my time for the duration of me being sick, up until the time when I went to Mississippi. Wow. And you were <coughs> healed at what point? Uh, what well, age? The, the, the members of the church would fast and pray. I don't exactly remember when or uh, what age I was, but uh, my mom refused to let the doctors in because she said she would rather for the Lord to take me rather than the doctors experiment on me. And I have that letter. I have that letter that she wrote. That is awesome. Yeah. So you lost the use of your hands. You were three. But as time went on, you became more mobile. When did you uh, have an interest in art? When did you notice that? Well, when I learned about uh, having an interest in art was when um, uh, my brothers and sisters would have to go. They would have to walk a long way to school. I wasn't able to walk with them. So what I did, you know, like sitting around the house all day and everybody, all the older kids are gone. And I'm there with the smaller kids. So I just started doing little, you know, just started finding things around the yard to do. Um, I learned to, um, uh, I would uh, make dolls out of Pepsi Cola bottles or Coke bottles. You know, at that time, they had a nice little hole shape in it. And I would take uh, 
It's called, we call it seagrass string, but it's ice string. Yes. And I would take the ice string and uh, I would nail it with sticks in the head of this hot bottle. And I would take a nail and put, but we had wood stoves. Yes. So I would take a nail, a large nail, and put it on the stove and curl it. And it would stay curled just like a regular, you know, curling iron. That's awesome. So I know, <clears throat> about what age were you at that time? I, I was no more than about, probably about, I may have been about seven at that time. So early on, and as time went on, you your art ability continued to develop. Yes. yes. So what are some of the um, art uh, demonstrations or manifestations that you did as maybe in middle school, high school? Okay, in high school, um, we my parents were uh, sharecroppers. So there were a lot of days that we didn't have lunch when I was able to ride the bus to school. So what I would do, uh, I noticed that a lot of the students didn't want to draw their uh, artwork as class. So what I would do was uh, I would uh, draw maps and things and sell them for like a nickel. So yeah. you were an entrepreneur. Yes. That is amazing. And uh, because, you know, there were there were two young ladies that was friends with me. They would always have money, but they would share their, their lunch with me. Because at that time, uh, you could get snacks out of the machine for like a nickel and six cents for a pop, you know. So I, would, I wasn't making enough money to buy my lunch. That is incredible. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, uh, at the time, you know, I didn't. I had a I had a feeling that I wasn't supposed to be doing it, <laughs> but I didn't know I was doing what they call now plagiarism. <laughs> but you know, it was it was like or they were they, they were <laughs> it, it was their fault because they didn't want to do their work. Yes, you know? yes, yes. So what I would do, I, I just continued doing that through, throughout school. That that's incredible. So now we are sitting in your art studio. Mm -hmm. This is incredible, and as we look around and see some of the pieces you've done and some of what you're working on right now, it is just amazing. Where did you get your learning? Um, I, I share this with a lot of people. I was, you know, I was having uh, issues with my parents, my mother growing up. So, uh, in having those issues, I grew up to, you know, because I, I started blaming her for everything that happened to me. I blamed her for polio, which wasn't her fault. And I started blaming God because he shouldn't have done that to me because, you know, it was the most children he could have done that to. <laughs> but, you know, as I got older, I said, you know, I would have rather had the polio than the rest of them because I really always was the one that was strong enough to handle it, you know, because... Um, the doctor had already said that I would never walk again, but with determination, you know, and with prayer, yes, and with yes, the saints and yes. everything, uh, I was able to defy the odds. So, did you go to school for it, or is this just an no, innate no, gift? I, it's a gift. Uh, as I was saying earlier about the issue with my mother, um, I was working one night. And my oldest daughter came in and she wanted to know, when did I learn to do this? Because I raised them on welfare. They're successful young women now, but because I made sure that they weren't welfare recipients. One is a doctor, one is our RN. And uh, the youngest girls uh, served seven years in the Navy. So, you know, in the meantime, of not being able to work and, you know, on a system and everything, I instilled in them that they need to do better with their lives because I would have done better if I could have. But it's amazing, you know, what might have seemed like uh, some years lost. Mm -hmm. Here it is, you are creating mm -hmm. unique art that Thank no you. one else does. It's just incredible. So we're going to get the opportunity to talk about some of the work that you're doing, how you come about the ideas, uh, just looking around at your studio, some of these pieces you've gotten started, and we'll talk about your signature 
piece that mm -hmm. you use on almost every piece of your art. Mm -hmm. So we will be talking to you again. This is the end of our first part with our unique artist, Hattie Marshall Duncan. I'm Sharon Benjamin for Secrets for a Successful Life. Join us the next time when we talk with Hattie Marshall Duncan about how she comes up with ideas for her art pieces, just what she uses with the art pieces, uh, what the dreams are for the art pieces, and you will get some excellent information. Again, I'm Sharon Benjamin for Secrets for a Successful Life. Please join us the next time. Connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and please subscribe to our YouTube channels at Secrets for a Successful Life at Sharon Benjamin and Randall and Sharon Benjamin. Again, thanks for joining us. See you next time for Secrets for a Successful Life. Okay.